Big Questions. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about linear color. And what linear color tries to do is to blend like real light. This has a much more natural effect with real video. Operations like compositing, blurring, and frame blending are always asking the question, what's in between red and blue? The obvious answer is purple, but in a non-linear compositing workflow, it's actually more murky brown. And compositing in linear color fixes this. Now, while operations in linear color work uh, generally speaking, they work best for natural video. It doesn't often work well for artificial graphics with alpha channels that are designed to be composited non-linearly. Let's go have a look. All right, here we are in Premiere Pro, and I have two layers. I have a red layer, and if I turn that off, I have a blue layer underneath. And all I've done here is just added a couple keyframes and blended from 0 to 100% and we go from 100% red to 100% blue and part way in the middle we are looking at a very bright purple and when we create a new sequence in Premiere Pro by default we turn on linear color now let's go and have a look and see what happens when we turn that off in this example here so this is my sequence I have it selected I'm going to go to the sequence menu and choose sequence settings down at the bottom, composite in linear color. And watch what happens. I'm going to turn this off and click OK, and you can see it's now a little bit more murky. I'll go turn it back on, and you can see that brightens it up. OK, so linear color looks great. Here, when does it look bad? Let's go in and have a look at this sequence. And I'm going to double click on the top. This is a title, which is a gradient going from 100% black to 0% transparency. And the midpoint is where this gradient or this alpha channel ends. You can see the transparent background right there. Uh, and as you can see over here, we get a transparent video uh, on top. So if I turn that off, we've got some bars in the back. And when I turn that on, we're blending over here. So if I go to my sequence settings right now, and I turn on composite in linear color watch the difference in this gradient alpha channel when I click OK boom you can see now it cuts off right over to there instead of being in the middle point it's now cut off directly over to, to this uh, almost the yellow area inside here you'll notice that back in our sequence settings composite in linear color says in parentheses requires GPU acceleration or max render quality so you can have a great look without GPU acceleration um, I'll go through a list of what is uh, what happens in a CPU and a GPU in, in a minute but right now I want to show you how you can see the wrong thing with software rendering and, and this is the part that tripped me up but I'll show you how it works so this requires a GPU um, or maximum quality render. So I have a yellow line and I'll go to my file menu, project settings, general, and you can see I have GPU acceleration. So I'll turn that off, click OK, delete my previews, and I'll go back to my sequence, go to my sequence settings, and I'll turn on maximum render quality because now I need that because I don't have a GPU acceleration. Click OK, and your first thought might be, actually, it looks pretty good by turning off the GPU. Here's the little thing. The GPU is really fast and accurate, and it shows me that. In software rendering, it's not going to show me this here unless I uh, make an output or I render it inside here. So uh, in the sequence, you can render or hit your Enter key and bang it a boom now it looks bad this is what happens when it's linear compositing something that should be non-linear uh, composited uh, with uh, non-linear with uh, linear color turned off so just to go back and and show you that in the sequence settings maximum render quality also shows up in our output so if we go to the file menu and export media You'll notice inside here, let me just shrink this down. 
we have um, maximum render quality here that's turned on. Now, like I said, by default, um, your uh, linear color is turned on, maximum frame quality is on. This is just an area for you to look if you're doing alpha channel compositing and you're finding some of those issues. All right, so let's go look at our settings for the GPU. So for the GPU, GPU effects are always 32-bit. So we've got a list of accelerated effects and they're always 32-bit. 32-bit, by the way, doesn't mean the same as what we're thinking about. Like when it, here I am on Windows 8.1, 64-bit. That's not what 32-bit is. 32-bit is the color information inside here. That's the biggest, widest amount of color that we can get. So GPU effects are 32-bit. That's a good thing. All right, let's keep going. Scaling is always best quality. So anytime you're scaling something up, even if you just drop the video and you're scaling it up or you're scaling down, you're dropping HD into SD. Linear compositing is controlled by the sequence setting. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is very important. This, it's, so if you don't have linear compositing turned on in the sequence setting and you have your GPU turned on, the GPU won't magically make this uh, accurate. You need to turn on maximum render quality in the output settings. Maximum bit depth, which is also another choice, switches some importers between 8 and 32 bit. So Premiere Pro is actually pretty darn smart when it comes to this. It's not going to make this choice without thinking. Um, and I use that term thinking or computing uh, lightly. Um, it actually looks at what you're doing. So if you have a straight cut video, no effects, and everything's 8-bit, it's going to output 8-bit completely because it, it's not going to benefit you by doing anything more with that color. You're not going to get any better output. So it's smart enough to know when to pass through, but it's also smart enough to know, hey, you've got some kind of compositing or blending on here. We better crank up the calculations of that so we get the best, smoothest, most awesome output. Okay? Next up, maximum render quality switches some importers to use larger resolutions. So again, it's just going to use the best quality it can from that file. And then the last one, unaccelerated effects follow the rules of the CPU section. Oh, so what's the CPU section? That's here. So this is when we don't have GPU acceleration turned on. Maximum bit depth switches between using 8 and 32-bit effects and processing. So again, uh, even with just the CPU, it's going to make the smartest choices and uh, use the best bit depth depending on what you have going on in that sequence. Maximum bit depth switches some importers between 8 and 32. Okay, again, makes it better. Maximum render quality switches scaling to use the higher quality bicubic resampler. And you might be uh, used to the bicubic resampler in After Effects and Photoshop, and that's what we're going to use here. Maximum render quality, in addition to the sequence settings, switches compositing, Gaussian blur, and frame blending to linear color. So all you have to do is check off that maximum render quality, and it's going to take care of all of that. Remember, we're here in the CPU only section of this slide. We're not talking about GPUs. This is, oh, I only have a CPU. Uh, then I'll do that. I'll turn that on. And maximum render quality switches some importers to use larger resolutions. All right. So that is um, a quick look at linear color and linear color compositing. Like I said, uh, for most editors just doing straight cuts and outputting and titles and overlay you probably don't have to worry about this, but it's important to just kind of have it in the back of your head and, and realize that, that if you're doing things with artificial computer generated graphics with alpha channel, so this doesn't matter if they don't have an alpha channel, they have an alpha channel like that, that gradient um, um, transparency that I had on there, you, you obviously saw that there's definitely some issues inside there. So let's make sure that we uh, understand what's going on inside the timeline. By the way, those slides were all played back with markers advancing on the timeline in Premiere Pro. Hey, who said you need PowerPoint? I um, also want to uh, have a shout out to Steve Hogue, a uh, brilliant guy, like really, really smart, big brain guy. Um, and uh, he helped me a lot on this to make sure I got all my facts straight. So now you have all of your facts straight. But I don't have to know what it is. I don't have I don't feel right by not knowing.
Das ist ein Freitag.